Hi, this is Jeff West, and I'd like to give you a demo of the new Java service on the Oracle Public Cloud. If you go to cloud.oracle.com, you'll see this page here. This is a landing page for all of Oracle Public Cloud services. In order to get started and set up a Java service, you can either click on Java under Platform Services, or you can choose Java from the Offerings menu at the top of the screen. This is the landing page for the Java service. Here you can find all the information you'll need about the Java service, including features, specifications, and pricing once it's available. The Java service is not yet available, but you can sign up to be notified once it's available to the public. For the demo, we'll switch to an internal lab where I'll show you how easy it is to set up a new instance of the Java service. There are three simple steps for setting up the Java service. The first step is to choose a service name and specify a service group name. The Oracle Public Cloud allows you to group services using a service group for ease of administration and user access. When you set up a new instance of the Java service, you can choose to use an existing group or to create a new one. So here I'm specifying my service and my service group together to create a new Java service instance. These two strings, combined with java.cloud.oracle.com, will represent the unique URL for your Java service. Next, you'll be prompted to confirm the contact information for the administrator. This will be pre-populated when you're logged in with your account. Finally, you need to accept a license agreement. When you click Submit Request, your Java service will be provisioned and ready to use in a few moments. Next, I'd like to switch over to Eclipse and show you some of the IDE integration features we offer through the Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse. We have updated our Eclipse plugins to allow you to deploy to the Oracle Public Cloud as easily as you would to a local server target. This will enable Eclipse developers to deploy code directly to the Oracle Public Cloud using the same approach they're familiar with. We have also added these type of features to NetBeans and JDeveloper as well. Let's take a look at some of the settings. For the server target, you'll choose the runtime of Oracle Public Cloud. Then you'll be prompted to specify the service group, service instance, and administrator credentials as well. The administrative endpoint service instance URL and WebLogic service URL will be hidden in the public release of the software. So you can see it's pretty easy to configure a Oracle Public Cloud Java service runtime for your server target. Next, I'd like to create a simple web app and deploy it to the Oracle Public Cloud. I'll start by creating a typical dynamic web project. Next, I'll create a simple JSP. And I'll use this to show you the integrated whitelist checking feature for the Oracle Public Cloud. The Oracle Public Cloud Java service has a whitelist of packages and operations that can be used in the applications deployed there. This is important because you would not want someone to be able to do a system exit or to do something else that would affect the stability or performance of a Java service instance. Here, you can see that the call to system exit is highlighted as a problem. And you can also see the whitelist violations using the whitelist problems tab at the bottom in the IDE. In order to deploy the application, I remove this line which would prevent a successful deployment. Next, we'll deploy the application to the cloud. Using the typical Eclipse approach, you can simply choose Run As, Run On Server, and then choose your Java service instance. Once your app is deployed and available, you can see the deployed app in the IDE browser. Next, I'd like to show you some of the monitoring features we have for the Java service, which are available through the IDE as well as in a browser. 
You can right-click on your Java service instance and choose Open, and then Oracle Java Cloud Service Control. Using the Oracle Java Cloud Service Control, you can see things like JDBC Web and Work Manager performance, resource usage, deployed applications, and response times for your Java service. You can see in the landing page many of the metrics that you would need to understand in order to know how your Java service is performing at a glance. You can see graphs for CPU and heap usage, as well as for response time and requests per minute. You can also see metrics for the number of active sessions, the number of work manager requests per minute, and all open JDBC connections as well. Next, we'll take a look at the log for the Oracle Java Cloud Service instance. You can access this by right-clicking on the Java Cloud Service instance and choosing Open Oracle Java Cloud Service Log. Here you can see the jobs processed by the service in the associated logs. For a deployment, you can see the virus scan results, the whitelist scan results, as well as the overall status for each operation. Check out cloud.oracle.com and sign up to be notified as soon as the Java cloud service is available to the public.